I wanted to make a quick video on how to find left or right approximations. These are also called Riemann sums. We'll talk about that in class. So first of all, you're given a function and an interval, and it's a closed interval from A to B. And then you're given a question of either, you know, L, L6 or L5 or L12 or whatever it is, or R5 or R7 or something. And so we're going to find out how we would go about that in general speak. So first of all, we need to figure out how many partitions are we talking about? Well, that's what the N is. The N is telling you how many partitions there are. So now we have to figure out the width of each one of our partitions. So to find the width of each of our partitions, well, you that's your delta X. And so your delta X, meaning your, the width of your partition, is well the interval B minus A divided by the number of partitions. And that will give you how wide each of the rectangular areas we're going to find are. Now, when we say partitions, I'm, um, the, if we said there were six partitions, there would be seven endpoints because there's your A and then your B and then the ones in between. That's a total of N plus one endpoints. So if there's seven partitions, there's eight endpoints. If there's 12 partitions, then there's 13 endpoints. So there's always n plus one. How do we find each one of them? Well, it starts off with, um, I'm going to say this notation, c sub zero. These are going to be my endpoints. And when we have sub zero, that usually means the initial. So the initial one is going to be equal to your, <coughs> excuse me, your a, and then you're going to add no, zero, delta x's, and that will give you your very first one. To find your second endpoint, meaning endpoint c sub 1, we're going to take a and we're going to add one change in x. When we want to find our, second, our third endpoint, which is c sub 2, we're going to add two end, um, of our delta x's, and so on and so forth, and you will have all of these until you get to what we say as c sub n, meaning whatever the n was. Remember from problem number one, we said the number of partitions up here. So this is how many um, that we have of partitions. So this was zero partition because it was the end point A. This is one, two, three, four, all the way to, to however many they are. Meaning c sub zero is your A and c sub n is your B. And that is your closed interval. And all of these other C sub numbers are the ones you found. So what do we do next? Well, we want to find, um, if it was L sub N, <coughs> we're only going to use the left N endpoints, which means you're going to start with C sub zero, and you're going to go to the one right above, not the last one, but the one right before that. So that's why we say C sub zero, the initial all the way through c sub n minus 1. <clears throat> for your right summations, for your right estimations, we're not going to start with a. We're going to start with the end point right after a, c sub 1. And again, each one of these is going to have n endpoints. So if I had asked for left six, you're still going to have six endpoints. You're going to have endpoint zero, one, two, three, four, and five. If I wanted right six, I would have endpoints one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then the next step is to add them all up. So we're going to add up all the rectangular areas. And so this is what left six would look like. Whoops, I don't have the numbers there. Just wait a sec. They'll, they'll appear. There they are. And here, when I'm doing the right six, here I'm making sure that you're recognizing that those endpoints are the um, starting with one, two, three. And this is the notation for it, okay? Now I want to do one example of one that's not left or right. Here's an example. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to give you the questions and the steps you need to do. So for this one, we're doing midpoints. So we kind of go through the same process, and we say, how many partitions are there? Well, this one says six. What's the width of each partition? So here's our A and our B. You're going to, I want you to figure that out. I'm just saying we need to find the width of that partition. You're going to do 8 minus 5 divided by 6, and you'll find the width of your partition. But because this is M, midpoint, 
we need to find out half of m. So you're going to have 5, excuse me, 8 minus 5 divided by n, and then take half of that. Why do we need that? Because we need to find those midpoint endpoints, or the midpoints is what we're going to say, the midpoints. So using the 1 half delta x and the interval is what are the six midpoints? And so um, you're going to find out what, you're still only going to have six of them, but you need to figure out what they are, and you'll find six of them. So you'll have midpoint number one, midpoint number two, midpoint, you'll have six of those, and add up the six rectangular areas. We don't say m sub zero, it's just midpoint number one, midpoint number two, midpoint number three, midpoint number four, midpoint number five, and midpoint number six. We would add up the six rectangular areas by plugging in those midpoints into the function and multiplying them times delta x, not half. We use the half to find our midpoints only. The width of the rectangles is still that um, width of the partitions, which is delta x. Now, in both cases that I was showing you, we end up with these large summations. There is a shorthand, an easier way to write this, and it's a, for, it's a method called sigma notation. And so it's a faster notation. And this here is saying add up partitions 1 through 6 of the function using the midpoints. And it says, I, here's the index, which is telling me, oh, I'm going to do function m1, and so that's that first one up here, um, times delta x, then I'm going to do m2 times delta x, then m3. And it's saying to do exactly what I have written there. This is just a succinct way of writing out, this is what I'm going to do. Not only that, but if we had a formula for these midpoints, not just the numbers, but an e expression for them, like, oh, it's always going to be you know, five plus, well, well, we can talk about that in class. We can end up writing this in such a way that we could plug this into our calculator. Our calculator does summation notation, or otherwise known as sigma notation. So that's a quick little example of how to do some of these problems, step-by-step, step, not with a specific example.